Endometriosis is when endometrial tissue, which is usually present on the inner lining of the uterus, grows in different places. These endometrial deposits can be present on the outside of the uterus, on the ovary, on the fallopian tubes, and anywhere within the pelvis and abdomen. Just like the endometrial lining sheds every month and bleeds during menstruation as a period, these endometriotic spots also bleed. This blood cannot exit the body, but instead the blood collects within the pelvic cavity, over time creating adhesions and scarring. Bleeding of endometriotic spots on the ovary eventually result in the formation of a cyst containing old brown-colored blood called an endometrioma, or sometimes also referred to as a chocolate cyst. Here we have a severe case of deep infiltrating endometriosis. We can see multiple endometriotic spots on the pelvic side walls and two large endometriomas, which are completely adherent to the posterior aspect of the uterus and also stuck together. This sign is referred to as kissing ovaries, which is a classic sign identified on an ultrasound of severe endometriosis. So first of all, why does this occur? Well, the causes are not fully understood. The most popular theory is that of retrograde menstruation, where during menstruation some blood flows backward through the fallopian tubes into the pelvic cavity. This blood contains endometrial cells, which can stick outside the endometrium and grow. However, many women experience retrograde menstruation and not all of them develop endometriosis, so other factors must be at play such as immune system dysfunction, genetic factors, hormonal and environmental factors. How do they present? Endometriosis can present with painful periods and chronic pelvic pain, deep dyspareunia, infertility. This is due to damage of the fallopian tubes with adhesions and scarring, heavy menstrual bleeding, difficulty passing urine and opening bowels, a sign that endometriotic spots are present on the bladder or rectum, and also generalized fatigue. It is important to keep in mind that symptoms vary widely and can have a severe impact on a patient's quality of life. When suspecting endometriosis, our assessment should include a bimanual vaginal examination to note reduced organ mobility and tender nodularity. We can also perform imaging, usually starting off with an ultrasound, followed by an MRI. These can help find endometriomas or nodules, but smaller lesions can be missed. Our diagnosis can only be confirmed during a diagnostic laparoscopy, and in fact this is considered the gold standard investigation. The lack of sensitivity of ultrasound and MRI, although improving, makes the diagnosis of endometriosis particularly difficult. In fact, in some cases, it can take up to 10 years for patients to finally receive their diagnosis, which of course is very disheartening and frustrating. Now, when it comes to the management, unfortunately, there is no cure to just completely get rid of endometriosis, but there are different options to manage symptoms, and that is what we're going to discuss here. So first of all, pain relief with use of NSAIDs is our first option of management. Next, we have hormonal therapy, which aims to reduce or block estrogen, which fuels endometriosis growth. This can be in the form of the combined oral contraceptive pill, progestogen-only options such as the Minipil, Depoprovera injections, Mirena coil, and the subdermal implant. Gonadotropin-releasing hormone agonists can also be used to put the body in a temporary menopausal state, stopping ovulation and reducing estrogen. Similarly, we also have aromatase inhibitors. The next option looks at surgical treatments. This can be both diagnostic and therapeutic. It is usually performed during laparoscopy, but in some cases laparotomy can also be considered. Surgery involves removing endometriotic lesions. If the patient's family is complete, we can consider performing a hysterectomy. Now, most of these patients present with fertility issues, so next up we have fertility treatments. So the first involves surgical excision of endometriotic lesions, which can help to improve fertility. Other options include ovulation induction, or IUI, and in severe cases, IVF can also be considered. 
Now, besides medical options, you must be aware of lifestyle and supportive therapy. This includes an anti-inflammatory diet rich in omega-3 fruits and vegetables, limiting processed food and caffeine. Gentle movement like yoga or swimming helps to ease pain and reduce stress. Heat therapy can relax muscles and relieve cramps. Support groups and therapy provide emotional and mental health support for these patients. I hope you found this video helpful. Like and subscribe and let me know what you would like to see from me next.